And welcome to the No Kidding Podcast. Whoa, I'm Lisa. That's my <laughs> that's my immediate response. You're not welcome. Get out. <laughs> Just kidding. Always welcome. Did you, did you, you get your, your water? Yeah, I'm ready. I did. I'm going to need it. I have, um, I have this delicious, delicious stuff in front of me. Oh, you got a snack? A snacky snack? I do. Me too. Oh, come on. This is uh, great, great for the audio. Uh huh. Don't worry about it. Got some ASMR going on. People love yeah. that. Have you ever, have you ever heard of muck banging? I have. Yeah. Is that oh, what you're doing? Well, yeah. This is the new podcast formula. <laughs> Quintessential muck banging and uh, ASMR combo. How did you make cookies this good? Oh, thanks. I just followed a recipe and then baked them. That's what I did. It, uh, it doesn't... Um... Here's the thing. I Obviously, I feel like everybody, that's what people do. They just follow a recipe and make something. I mean, rarely do people actually create their own. I don't know. Maybe they do. That's the best way to do it. What? <laughs> to create your own? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, see, what I can... cooking's all about? Creativity. True. I guess that's true. Um, and there were a couple of things within the recipe. Actually, I did make little adjustments, I will say. Because always, here's the thing. Like, you always kind of think, oh, like, I like this recipe, but I don't like onions. Or I like this cookie recipe, but I don't like um, lemon. So I'm going to adjust, you know, like, you you might no, put... No, that's the worst way to approach it. Oh, okay. Maybe I because, do like... Because <laughs> then what they've done is they've crafted an experience, and then you're just like... <laughs> nah. I'm gonna I'm gonna take a little bit of a left turn here, and then you might end up somewhere <laughs> and go, right. "Well, this isn't very good." And then it's like, "Well, whose fault is it though?" Maybe that the, would be my maybe the onions yeah. were the perfect thing. Because here's the thing: I think a lot of people they were following a recipe at home to make something like a Cuban sandwich. They're uh-huh. gonna they're gonna put the a lot of people would put down the ham and other meats. I don't know exactly what goes on to a Cuban. I think there's some roast beef in there. And no, then just ham. they would put some cheese, and they would put some mustard, and they'd go, oh, I don't like pickles, and they'd leave them off. The pickles uh, are what pickles? make a Cuban. Well, pickles are necessary for most things with deli sandwiches. Like, you have to have, yeah, I mean, you can't do without the pickles. I mean, that's like, that's the quintessential flavor. You really lock the word quintessential but if you don't, in your mind. I know, right? But if you don't like pickles, it might ruin the sandwich. I mean, I, I love pickles, so I then can't be that person. maybe a Cuban isn't for you. <laughs> no, I love... Well, that's true. Otherwise, it's just a ham panini. I know. What's weird is that... Okay, so I know someone who loves... Who likes pickles. We won't go as far as to say loves pickles. Puts pickles on lots of things. Hamburgers. Uh, Cubans. Um, other sandwiches. But when it comes to barbecue sandwiches, you know, like the pulled barbecue... Oh, yeah, like, like pulled pork? Yeah, like pulled pork, pulled chicken, pulled beef, whatever it is. Barbecue, um, putting pickles on that is like disgusting. What? To this, to this person. Yeah, I'm oh, okay. like, I mean, I can, I can, I can see it, I guess. <clears throat> it doesn't, yeah, I don't know. I, I suppose I'd have to try it. But I've definitely had pickle, like I've had a pickle spear with, um, like with barbecue before. That's pretty good. So I imagine it'd be good as a sandwich. Well, most of the time they put pickles on there. So I don't understand. Like, obviously like that's pork a thing. sandwiches? Yeah. I don't know. I know they're common on like chicken sandwiches. I don't know. Here's another thing. Chicken sandwiches. There's a couple right ways to prepare chicken sandwiches. Pickles is one of them. And basically copious mayo is the other. Oh, yeah? I usually don't care for mayo that much. It's uh-huh. like take it or leave it. It's just kind yeah. of like a weird filler jelly. <laughs> yeah, Why? Well, right. But I don't know on a on a juicy like a chicken fried chicken sandwich you got to have like a, a a thick coating of um, mayo with pr- preferably a little bit of shredded lettuce to like really give it body and not just make it a slab mm. of s- sauce. Yeah, see the same person takes all the mayonnaise off of a chicken uh, chicken sandwich, but well, I that's, agree with that's healthy. But no, not, it's just because of the, t- the taste. Right. But <laughs> I I agree with you on, on that front and to some degree because mayo's – the only purpose for mayo is either to soften the bread if it's like more of a tougher bread or to add moisture to a sandwich if it's like more of dry meat. So like chicken would be a dry meat that you would need uh, like some kind of liquid 
Um, so you can either use, so- you could use any kind of sauce, but that's typically why I feel like mayo is used. It's used as a, a wetner. M- mustard and pickles, though, pretty good combination. Good with chicken. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. You know, have you ever heard of, uh, apparently they're famous. I don't know. Um, milk they're cookies famous. from New York? Yes, I you do. You do know about this? I do know them. Oh, somebody I- shipped them uh, Whoa. down south, as it were. So that I could try them alongside your cookies. How do you feel Are about you that? Are you serious? Well, um, I feel I feel up to the honored. Challenge. I well, I feel honored that they would, you know, com- compare my cookies to a milk bar cookie. Okay, I mean, what what is so special about this milk milk bar cookie? Is I believe it. Bar? Um, it just says milk really big on the cookie. Okay, well, I'm pretty sure milk bar like milk bar is known for their cookies, and I think it's just a milk. It's from the the, the shop milk, milk distributed bar. by Milk Bar in New York. Yeah, and why? Look at that. So Milk Bar, and I actually, um, I Milk Bar has a cake that I really want to try to make. Um, she, it's the Milk Bar is owned by a woman, and I. This is the only reason I know about it is because I saw a documentary on it. Um, oh, oh crap! That's pretty good. Yeah, I mean, and <laughs> she's like known for her. She basically started this this small little shop where she only sold milk and cookies. That's how it started, like her bakery. And Humble they you, you you would just walk up to the count like to the window. It wasn't even like a sit down place. You walk up to the window and you order milk and cookies, and then and she would give you that. And then she got bigger, and now she has like a whole bakery or whatever. But, Wait, um, when you say she got bigger, is it because of the cookies? Yeah. Because she became like from eating them or from selling them. No, 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 from selling them. She's actually a very tiny person. So, oh, wow, this is what a combination! Holy crap! I'm trying. um, What flavor is it? It's you are trying. Oh wow! Blueberry and cream. It's like a. It's like somebody was going to make a uh, cookies and cream, but some for some reason they switched out the cookies with blueberries. Oh. See, there you go, adjusting the recipe, and it turned out amazing. Here's the thing. So, what? I still think I like yours better. (gasps) Oh, my gosh. That is... The blueberries are a little chewy. I don't really like Mm. the texture so much. Okay. Here's the thing. I I do have a problem with, like, gourmet cookies and and cupcakes. Like, they became so popular. (laughs) But there is something about them that is not cozy and comforting and and like it's almost like there's a there's a level of artif- artificiality to it that's not a word i made that up <laughs> <laughs> but you get what i'm saying like it's almost like you can tell um it's like that... it's, it's trying to elevate itself and almost becoming uncomfortable in a way like almost like a, a really nice dress would make you look beautiful but you know wearing it is kind of like well this isn't no yes. this wasn't made to be worn by a human it was made to make a human look good Yes, yes. That's a good analogy. It's Very like, good. This is this was designed to taste good, not necessarily satisfy, which is a fine distinction. Yes. But it is definitely one. That's the one. You're good at this. Nobody nobody was sitting in there nobody here's the thing. You wouldn't <laughs> you wouldn't smoke a joint. <laughs> <laughs> here's and, the thing, guys. <laughs> and then go, you know what I want right now? I want a blueberry and cream cookie. <laughs> Like a stoner would never make this like at 12 a.m. because they were craving it. Nobody craves this combination. Nobody would think of it. Right? It's just it was created. It's out a delicacy. Of, somebody has like done some uh, cross testing. They've brought in uh, <laughs> experts. You know, yeah, they've brought in groups of people and they've said, "What flavors do you like together?" And they've somehow come across the uh, blueberry and cream combination, and they realize that nobody's cornered that market, and then they've created it. Right. It's almost well, yeah. manufactured in a way. I don't know. Wow. Nice. So who was, how did you get so lucky to get to try these cookies? Somebody brought them in for a potluck. Oh, okay. Um, That's crazy. Was, I wonder if they ordered them online or if they were like in New York and said, oh, I'll bring um, these home with I me. I think they live in New York and they sent them in as like, a, oh. they can't be there for the pot- potluck, but they're like, here's the cookies everybody wants from New York. Very cool. Yeah. Um, so, Yeah. That's that's cool. Well, thank you. That's very that's a compliment. What? So I would think for me, I made a, just so everyone knows, I made like six different types of cookies and distributed them for Christmas, like you know, 
the holidays or whatever. To the masses. To the masses. Um, not really. I mean, it was like a few people. But um, so I've gotten a lot of feedback about two specific cookies. And Can I say real quick? Yeah. I think one of them's got to be the York. How the heck do you make that? Yes, everybody loved that cookie. It's, it's a, a York peppermint patty. How'd you do it? It's basically a York peppermint pa- patty. What the heck is that stuff made out of? <laughs> What's so it funny? Is sugar? I don't know. Yeah. What's so funny is that's the only recipe that was kind of just like a wing it recipe. And really? But but it wasn't me winging it. I Somebody that I follow was winging it and just said, let me try to do this. And so she just started like throwing stuff together. So here I am like writing down everything that she's doing because I'm like, this is going to be great. <laughs> this sounds great. But um, she made the veg- a vegan version, which I did not make. Mine's not vegan. Um, I just like <gasps> she she used vegan butter and vegan milk and which I used. I didn't use dairy milk. So the only thing I changed was I used regular butter. Um, but anyways, so and oh, and I think I added um, oh, I doubled the recipe too because I don't know. It made like her recipe made like very, very, very little. Um, but anyway, so that was the one where I was just kind of like, it was like I saw it. It was actually on TikTok, and I was like, okay, um, you got that from a TikTok? Yeah, and she was just like, okay, I'm just gonna try this out and like see how it turns out. And I was like, I'm right there with you, girl. I'm gonna. I'm going to try this out too. (laughs) And it turned out to be a crowd favorite. I would say that pretty much every single person that I gave these to, that was the one that they were like, I want the recipe for this. Um, And then the other one that kind of stood out was the, um, the white almond cloud cookie. So those two. So, okay. I have some things written down. Where was the post that you did? I thought one of you, I think you said was like a cream cheese something. That's the one. Yeah. The white cream cheese. Okay. Cloud. So how did cream cheese come into that? I didn't taste that. I didn't. You didn't? I, didn't get, oh. I mean, I ate it, but I didn't taste the cream cheese. I wonder how that played into it. It's It probably made it a little bit more sour than sweet. Hmm. Okay. I can see that. Yeah. And then it had like almond extract and just. Definitely like, got almond. Yeah. Yes. More of a, like a nutty. It was good flavor and, and it was very they were like, so, like cakey like a lot yeah. of them were like uh they're almost like a cross between a cookie and a cupcake that's a good taste because it was made with cake flour so rather mm. than you know regular flour. i've tried that i've actually blended uh cake and cookie flour before uh-huh. like mixtures to make a cakey if you will a cakey and kind of oh. like a crisp flatter cookie look at you getting experimental yeah that's fun but i mean here's the thing you need a rigidly structured recipe if you want to produce something as complex and unique as a york peppermint patty that is <laughs> why it was the easiest one to make too because it was literally it just, like it, it, it blew my mind it's almost like somebody if they made a reese's it's like you can't just make that it's not just <laughs> peanut butter in there it's like they made they did something there it's like whipped it's sugary. yeah well, I'm bringing um, I'm bringing some to our party on a whatever day, the 27th, our Christmas party. I'll be sure to be there. Uh, it's just confusing people because yeah, don't date the episode. Sorry, we we, we recorded this yesterday, everybody. <laughs> let me re- let me rephrase that. So I'm bringing this to our party on s- next Saturday, year. Christmas S- next year, Sunday. Not even Christmas. It's just a party. We're just that's right. what we do. We party. Party. Um, because it was during requested the pandemic. By our stepmom. Or who knows? Maybe it. the pandemic isn't going on right now. It, yeah, it might have. We don't that know. The vaccine might have come through. <laughs> I mean, it did. Yeah, right? the vaccine came through. Uh, it's yeah. a shame that vaccine didn't come through. I'll just cut whatever. Edit it to apply. <laughs> so true. Um, yeah, so. Yeah. It takes. It's all. It's all it takes. That's, that's all. I, I feel like um, we started and there wasn't really an intro, but it's fine. Yeah, um, they know there's who that, we there's are. There was a shocking intro at the beginning. I'll use that. Okay. <laughs> I have to put like an audio warning at the beginning of the podcast. <laughs> um, well, you've made it this far, so welcome. Um, I was I'm going out of to teas. Say, out I was t- having tea with your cookie. Oh, and that's earlier. a nice combo. Yeah, unfortunately, I had to go with... Uh, I had to go with the green tea. And I, I think I talked about Yikes. it before. I love this this honey chamomile tea. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So good. It's a vanilla honey chamomile. Okay. Oh, and I really wanted that with your cookie, but oh. I was out. I I hit it too hard. I went through the whole box. <laughs> I liked it I paid a little price. too much. Yeah. Well, I've been drinking apple cider lately. 
Um, and well, getting into um, the whole, I mean, whenever we are at. <laughs> I just like apple cider all year round. What are you talking <laughs> of <course>. about? <laughs> uh, mid February. Speaking time. of hot drinks, though, I was I was wondering this, and I don't necessarily think this is true, but I want to see what your opinion is. So there's there's typically people who prefer apple cider or hot chocolate as their like holiday drink. We'll say. Mm-hmm. Um, I like both of them, so I can't really say. But I I. I wonder, this is what I was wondering, I was wondering if people who prefer to drink tea prefer apple cider and people who prefer coffee like hot chocolate. Do you have an opinion on that? Hmm. Uh, so wait, what, coffee for hot chocolate, but what type of people for the apple cider? Who like to drink tea, like hot tea. Hmm. Okay. That's interesting. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, obviously you have to have, I think, the palate for it. Obviously somebody who would have the palate for coffee would probably enjoy something like a hot chocolate. Mm -hmm. But then I also feel like um, I've definitely come in contact with a lot of, like, cold ciders via, like, for alcoholic beverages. Like, they often will sell them at bars and stuff so i don't think i could get into a cold cider yeah maybe that's uh gotten my uh piqued my interest Mm. but i i I like both of them so yeah same maybe it was and i also like i like tea and coffee so oh see i i don't like coffee but i do like both apple cider and and hot cocoa but let me ask you this because you drink hot cocoa you should drink coffee Uh -uh. no Uh -uh. Uh -uh. but i will say that I'm leaning more towards liking hot chocolate or hot cocoa or whatever you want to call it that has extra flavoring. And I don't know if I'm if this is destroying hot cocoa. What is your opinion on this? So like a lot of places you blasphemer. Now, yeah. Well, that's how I feel, to be honest. I'm like, oh, I'm I'm really, you know You're not being a purist. I'm becoming <laughs> I'm becoming a yuppie, okay? Um, <laughs> but a lot of places are offering like peppermint or um what else? Like caramel hot chocolates and like i don't know they add a bunch of stuff to it and then it tastes so good though i mean i know it tastes good what do you what is it is it just improving is it is it this like the thing where we were talking the other thing yeah i'm i'm being a i'm being a what is it declinism i'm having declinism i'm like (laughs) (laughs) i was thinking i was thinking about that i mean i don't know if i want to get into this again but i was thinking about how there's nobody really cares about uh philosophy anymore and then i remembered that there's a show called the good place that focuses heavily on uh is that the one with the where they're philosophy. basically in in heaven yeah they're in with they Kristen basically Bell. explore because they do they do kind of a thing where you they explore all versions of the afterlife or okay they're, they're kind of neutral they're like agnostic versions of the afterlife um, yeah so you could kind of imagine them as like being part of any religion's kind of idea like you know there is a good place there's a bad place and then there is like an in-between place right they kind of explore all of that but um yeah and they focus on like people's psychologies and um what it means to be good or bad so philosophy mm-hmm. and stuff but okay. so i guess there is uh at least one example of um it's staying alive out there yeah it's st- <laughs> but they it's often make there. the joke that one of the uh characters in the show is a philosophy or i guess he's dead now so was a philosophy professor um so but, he influenced the show a little bit yeah so i mean right. like his character obviously like brings up but they, they they also joke all the time about how boring he is and how what a useless and worthless like field he went into <laughs> <laughs> so. so true i mean you know i don't say it's useless but it, right. It's pretty. It's, it's, it's not exactly practical. <laughs> it's not practical. That's true. But speaking of last week, and you made that reservation, uh, reservation that um, recommendation for that that um, what am I trying to say? Spit it out. That w- website it out. called <laughs> Your Bias Is. Is that what yeah. it was? Your Bias Is. I went to that website. I was looking at it, and it's like the best website I've been on in a long time. So <laughs> Isn't I had it cool. I'm also recommending that for anybody who missed last week and wants to check it out. It's really cool. There's like so much information and so much to do. And there's actually like games and stuff that you can buy or or play and know thyself. Know know thyself. And I think it would be really helpful for my my job, like to to get one of these. So I might I might I might delve into that realm a little bit. Yeah, because all of them are 
common human biases. So you've, they've all presented themselves to you in some way, but sometimes mm-hmm. you just haven't like given it a lot of thought or thought that other people gave it a lot of thought. Like the self-serving biases, like when you believe your failures are due to external factors and yet your responsibility, you're responsible for your successes. And then it's kind of like, sometimes you, some of these kinds of things, like you'll notice people having this sort of bias and you're like having you're struggling to like communicate with people like like this is a thing like people do this and like I think it's kind of like this and like you're trying to wrap your head around it and you're trying to like convince other people that it's like a thing Mm -hmm. and it's kind of hard to talk about but it's it's nice that you can find like oh this has a name and it has like a wikipedia page about it and like what (laughs) this uh like psychological studies have been done about like people that think this way and stuff yes it's really interesting and I, I think that's partly why we need other people in our lives sometimes. It's it's a kind of a blessing and a curse because a lot of times, you know how you can see so clearly someone's situation and say, wow, I know exactly what's going on here. But when you're <laughs> that person and you're in it, you're like, like you have no clue. Yeah, you're but, totally you know what I mean? oblivious to it all. And, but then their whole thing is like, but when somebody tells you, you're like, I'm still going to do the opposite. <laughs> you're like, yeah, you're I'm not going to listen. I'm not going to listen to that because you're wrong. Um, but I also think that some people can become a little too familiar with these biases and then just like uh, feel like they can categorize every action that a person has and just like, oh, yeah, you're doing true. this. Yeah, you're one of these people, so you should probably stop. And it's like, oh, my God. You, I know. That is you've true. You've been on your bias dot is a little too much. <laughs> I Close remember when I was in school and I was learning all about psychology and then also when I was in medical and learning about like all these different, um, you know, like types of people and I would, that's all you do is you just start analyzing everybody and you're like, <laughs> psychoanalyst. Yep, yep, that person says, that person says. But I was and also going, always there's like more factors than you even know. So exactly. There's, that's there's a, a part of it that you can't that only the person in the situation. Yes. Know, and there's part there's parts that only the person outside the situation can know. So. I know that's that was going to be my next point is that like, yeah, sometimes it's easy to say that like, you you know exactly what's going on and you could see clearly. But then at the same time, you're not that person and you're not living that life and you don't know their struggles and you don't know all of the little intricacies. So, yeah. It's kind of, that's why you got to collaborate, I guess, and find your own ways. Anyway, speaking of last time, we were talking about answering questions. Do you want to do that? Do you want to try, you know, try um, doing that? Yeah. My favorite game is uh, Halo. So. <laughs> Question one answered. It? Done. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, this is like quick fire. You got it. You, there, there's no rambling. Oh, is this? No, it's not. Are it. you trying to Phoebe me? No. No. <laughs> You know that episode? Yeah. And Joey tries to do it without Phoebe's supervision, and we know what happens then. <laughs> Joey can't do anything without supervision. <laughs> Honestly, can he? I don't think so. Oh, yeah. uh, do we have any friends, friend lovers in this, in our crowd? Maybe. It's maybe always not. weird when they have the episodes where they're driving a car. You ever notice that? It's like so rare oh. because they live in New York. Yeah. But then every now and then they drive a car, and you're like, I didn't know Joey knew how to drive. <laughs> yeah, like who has a... <laughs> license in this group <laughs> but it's kind of funny i mean like they don't often show people driving in other shows i don't know anyways um yeah side tangent um, what were we saying something about quick quick fire no rambling uh, I don't, we don't do that so i don't know if we'll get through any of these questions but we can try. <laughs> first question oh yeah so anyways i was thinking the other day first question is what's your favorite time of day it's six o'clock wow nice <laughs> you said quick fire <laughs> that's good mine's five mine's well mine's like dawn so that would probably be six o'clock it's like when it's just starting to get dark out mm. yeah okay yeah. what's your biggest weakness wait d- dawn oh. but you said when it's starting to get dark i meant dusk dusk oh yeah well i'm in 6 a.m so anyways no dawn <laughs> which one's which because this isn't it from dusk, dusk is when it goes down the sun goes down dawn no. is when the sun comes up i think it's the opposite so you think you wake up in the morning, you're like, oh, and the sun's coming up and you're like, what a great dusk. No, I'm saying dawn. Oh, yeah. Dawn is in the morning and dusk is in the evening. So dusk, right? Correct. What's your biggest weakness? The reactant spines. <laughs> yeah, that was my reactant <laughs> Um, Yeah, I don't know. I suppose uh, I can be 
uh, contrarian. There you go. Okay. Yeah. It's a um, common weakness. I don't know if it's my biggest weakness. Yeah. I, I, I see. I was going to say prideful, which I think prideful goes along with being well, okay. contrarian. <laughs> <laughs> Fine. I guess I'm prideful. No, not for you. For me. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I was going to say prideful. <laughs> I'm psychoanalyzing you. We should just answer these for, for each other. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I think I can be a little critical of it. You're like, nope, it's pride. <laughs> Wrong. <laughs> yeah. Mine would be prideful. Or, or, um, uh, you're or too just, proud? Well, like, I, I, I always call it pride, but I think it's more like, I don't like, I don't like it when I have to rely on other people. So I'm like, I, and you're like, self sufficient to a fault. Yeah, like too much. So to the point where I'm like, Lone I wolf, perhaps. Yeah. And I also think a weakness of mine is obviously the whole too many interests thing because it's like paralyzing. Yeah. Um, I don't think it's necessarily prideful because it's also, I think prideful would be is you would feel bad um, like taking help from other people because of like how it makes them think of you. But I think you're also not wanting to take help from other people just because of the position it puts them in. Yeah. Yeah. Both. But like you said, how you you do the opposite. So like, if somebody were to say, um, "Let's let's do this," I'd say, "No, I want to do it my way." <laughs> I don't know. Anyways, um, yeah, I don't know. I think there's a difference, but there's sure. got to be like a word I can for see, it. I can see the chain. I can see the link you're tugging on. Okay. Okay. So, what's your biggest strength? Um, my left arm. Because I yes. write with that one, so oh, okay. I'm a little bit stronger on that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, free thinking. There you go. See, haha. Nice. My biggest weakness and my biggest strength. Haha. It's always a blessing and a curse. This yeah, show. exactly. Everything's uh, got two sides. So if something is emphasized about your personality, it can be both a blessing True. and a curse. I was going to say open-mindedness, which I think is Double, the same. Double-edged sword. Well, you see, open. if I was open-minded, I wouldn't do the opposite. I would be like, well, it's interesting that you suggest that. Maybe I <laughs> should do what you say. This is true. So um, perhaps I guess... not. But... Oh, see, but the thing is, I will always consider things as long as people present them humbly. I don't know. It, it's There's something about like... Yeah, somebody, it depends on how it's approached. Somebody assuming I almost it's almost like my natural defense mechanism against the Dunning Kruger effect. I assume that if somebody's confident confident enough to be like, you do this, I'll be like, Oh, you must not know what you're talking about. I'm just gonna <laughs> I'm gonna make sure that I don't do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm the same way. So I get it. But then again, sometimes people have good ideas and then I'm like right. But he told me to do it, so Right. I'm go the other way. I agree. I agree. I think we have, we have very similar strengths and weaknesses. No but rambling I say, side tangents. I know. I think my one of my strengths is... Oops, I dropped something. Um, one of my strengths is obviously not holding on to things. Um, <laughs> is like seeing the big picture of things. So I don't get so tied up in the little things. And I kind of can say, you know, okay, I can see, I can see the whole picture here and go with that. Reflective. So, you step back. Yeah, step back. Um, yeah. So what's the what's um the biggest learning experience you've had this year? This year. Yeah, this um, is for a year. It's an end of the year questions. Hmm. Learning experience. I guess um that's broad. <laughs> broad broad question to have. I mean there's the Okay, maybe you could say like what's one thing you've learned this year? Um I don't know, being uh mindful of like somebody else when it comes to um you know, choosing activities and stuff. I think it, it was uh, a lot of fun to devise um, the whole trip for uh, the engagement situation and mm-hmm. being able to kind of build a experience around like somebody else's enjoyment and engagement can be a lot of fun and uh, also uh, increase your own enjoyment. So I don't know. That was kind of cool. I don't know if it was what like grand nugget of knowledge that came out of that but yeah <laughs> well yeah like and just yeah. interesting thing to reflect on it's yeah like it's good to to think about others when you're like doing things for others and and yeah i also learned you can do case statements within the column selection uh portion of an sql select statement that's huge i mean yeah, that's, I life, al- no that's life altering <laughs> you, you can basically have excel pivot table functionality within an sql query Wow. Okay. It's well, cool. I mean, 
that's something you got to know for life. So I'm glad you learned that this year. Yeah. Well, sets you up for, for company paid for the learning course. So <laughs> done and done. Easy. Okay. Um, biggest learning experience. I, I mean, I would think the biggest learning experience this year was like the world kind of closing down. Mm-hmm. Um, that's kind of a big experience, but the learning aspect of it for me, I think was the, I mean, I've, I, I've had other experiences where I've had to like quickly adapt my life to fit circumstances. So I don't really think I learned that this year. I kind of already had those skills, thank goodness. But, um, I think just, um, I don't know that you're right. This is kind of a hard one, but yeah, so abstract learning how to maintain connections and a light uh, like a, like a, a normalized lifestyle when life isn't normal i guess that would be yeah i mean kind of i guess but then it's also, a very unique challenge that we are currently in the midst of yeah um hmm. hmm but then i think i've also learned that I, I don't like the structure of my job, so I would like to <laughs> change it. <laughs> it's a good thing to learn. Yeah. Okay, what's your oh, what's your idea of the perfect date? Um, mountaintop proposal, that's for Not, sure. You I mean that's you, a perfect date. You nailed that one this year, so there you I go. Mean, um how do, how do you beat it? True. Dare I don't you. know. My idea of a perfect date would be doing all of the things that I love <laughs> at once. With with the, a person that all, that also loves to do the things that I love. I can't Oh, stop. yeah, of course. Like... You, got, <laughs> you have somebody who's on the same level. What I mean is not that, I, like, I'm forcing them to do the things that I love, but that... They're right there with you going, yeah. oh, my God, we're both great. We're both just loving the whole day. Yeah, we're, we're both just on that level of, like, this is the best. That's the best. Excellent. Um, what is... That's a good one. Yeah, what's one vice you wish you could give up? Um... I mean, I could give up any vice. Oh, I, I'm good. not addicted. I can put it down anytime. <laughs> that's what they always say. Um, I it mean, doesn't control me. I control it. I guess the most recent uh, vice that I've struggled with, at some extent, is just coffee. But okay, I mean, you know, it's fine. I could definitely stop. I have uh, like gone a few months without it, just to be like, I can't. But you know, then as soon as I start drinking again, it's the thin end of the wedge. And then after a while, it's like, yeah, I'll just have, I'll have one and then I'll have a couple things of tea. And then, you know, I'm drinking like four cups of coffee. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. Yeah. That's a hard one. Um, so does cap, okay, never mind. This is going to go on a tangent, but does caffeine affect you? Like where you can say it's hard for me to function without caffeine? That's a great question. And something that I've explored a lot <laughs> in the months. It's like, there's something to it like there it's it feels clarifying when I have access to it and like an easy way to like just add that little bit to the scale to make me like a little more uh, ready to jump into uh, something that I might otherwise be dragging my feet like Ugh, this is a annoying kind of task that I don't want to do or something. Mm-hmm. But then there's also the... Um, side effect of if I sit down after having a cup of coffee and like okay ready to get down to this stupid like filing work or whatever I gotta do and then I get into this like weird side tangent I just immediately like lightning bolt over to this and then I'm like doing like labels for two hours and I don't even like (laughs) time zips by as I'm doing some other mundane mundane tasks that I wasn't even supposed to be doing at the time but I'm just like I feel like I need to do something and for some reason that's the thing that grabbed my attention instead of the thing I actually meant to do when I sat down because of so, the coffee? Yeah, because I'm just, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to do something. I'm like, all right, great. I'm going to use this to get through this annoying oh, thing that okay. I, like, I didn't want to do. But then like my ADD takes me to something else. At least I'm productive. I did yeah, something. Yeah, well, true, true. But, so, but I guess the question is. It's not necessarily like, oh, I drank coffee and now I'm, Yeah, perfect. So, so that was my question. Like, is it, do you think that it's like you you drink the coffee because you like the way it makes you feel like physically or do you drink the coffee because it's a comforting, warm, like, um, like thing that makes you excited and like gives you a sense of like calm so that you can tackle, you know, more challenging things. So I wonder if it's more like. I mean, a, I think every vice has part of it both, is yeah. like the safety blanket effect. You know, there's like yeah. the it's a cup of coffee in my hand. I can take on the world. 
Right. Um, but there is... Um, the addiction yeah, too. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say I have a cup of coffee to calm me down. But, <laughs> but <laughs> it's... Um, That's yeah, true, yeah. There's also the uh, other effect that, you know, I've tried to see if I'm victim to is the withdrawal. Right. And I don't know, you know, I've been able to like stop for a week or even months at a time without really... And like even including like caffeine free, totally like um, just water, no tea or anything. And um, I don't know, good. like I think they're like obviously when you don't have a cup of coffee and you don't have that like extra boost energy, like you're sitting there like, oh, I'm like really like dragging my feet today. And I think a lot of people maybe, I don't know, maybe overly attribute that to like a big crash just mm-hmm. because they're coming off of like having had four cups of coffee every day for the past like two months and then just thinking like oh I'm this like super productive person and then oh I don't have my cup of coffee and like I'm going through these withdrawals I mean there is a little bit like it has happened and I'm sure like some people have it worse and Mm -hmm. like you know there's a few times where I've experienced like a headache or two but nothing very serious but it is the situation where I think I'm just lazy like that all the time and it's just very starkly <laughs> obvious when I just came off of like a week of drinking coffee and like being more productive. <laughs> yeah. And then like when I'm not drinking coffee, I'm like, oh, well. True. You know, I just kind of take the world at a slower pace. Um, you know, I could still like, hey, but I do have a little more mindfulness, at least, like I said, um, don't have that situation where I'm like, oh, let me do this. And I get distracted for two hours. Um, just like get doing some random thing that doesn't isn't necessarily important. Right. Um, you know, there's a little more, I guess, um, calm mindfulness without it, but I don't know. So don't maybe, know it, maybe your is... vice is doing the unrelated mundane task first. <laughs> <laughs> That's everybody's, right? The procrastination. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, yeah, I, I do that sometimes. Just I feel like once I start doing the mundane thing, then it's like, okay, well, it's just warming me up for the more productive thing. And then it well, turns into... Like the... Yeah. It's like the productive thing is more important. So it's like it almost feels less of a burden to like take on the meaningless thing. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> or even like the um, like one thing is just frankly way more boring than the other. <laughs> and then <laughs> you're like, I'll do this boring thing because it's a little less boring. Right. Yeah. But, well, yeah, I was it's... asking about the caffeine because like I've had moments where I've had caffeine or tried to have caffeine to wake myself up or whatever. And I it, I don't think caffeine has any effect on me as far as my alertness level. Like, let's say it's really late at night and I'm dry, I am have to drive like three hours. And so I'm like, oh, I really need to wake up. I'm going to drink, you know, a five-hour energy or whatever. No effect on my level of tiredness at all. But it does make me jittery and it does make me like, gives me a headache and makes you feel warm. But I feel, I still feel like really tired and no, like nothing's really changed as far as my, you know. Five awakeness. hour energy does? Yeah. I feel like caffeine has that effect more than five hour energy. But well, isn't there, caf- isn't that what five hour energy is? Isn't that caffeine? Um, I think, I'm not sure. I know that it's, uh, it kind of uh, boosts itself or um, what do you call it? Uh platforms itself as like the non jittery uh, option because I think it's caffeine free. Hang on. Oh, I don't know. Well, I don't mean like super because- jittery, just like I feel kind of like just uncomfortable where my body is it feels warm and I get a headache. So I feel like that's like one of my things. If I if my body is not uh, doesn't feel normal, I get really anxious. So I'm like, Ugh, I don't I don't like that feeling. But I've had other things like Coke or um, I've tried coffee before and it just doesn't really affect me. The way that okay. people say it does, I don't know. So a cup of coffee has 95 milligrams of caffeine. And uh, the five-hour energy extra strength has 242 milligrams. Dang. But the lowest, uh, they have a decaf version, which despite the name does have some caffeine and is six milligrams. So it's like green tea amount, essentially. Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, it kind of varies wildly, I guess. But um, I think the thing is that they focus more on like blasting you with liquid vitamins, essentially, <laughs> to give your body uh, like tons of like more, I guess, quote unquote, natural energy. Okay. But, um, well, but it's like blasting. It's giving you like ten thousand percent what you would normally get of like 
um i think like b12 and stuff like that like mm-hmm. to give you tons of energy but um yeah i don't know but i know that for sure like when you're saying like late at night you're taking uh like things to wake you up i know that i have the effect a lot of times where if there's a certain point where if i go beyond that point and try and have a coffee it will actually put me to sleep like if my body is like ready for bed <laughs> like it's like right. it was like too tired i'm like well barely able to keep my eyes open or something i've definitely had cups of coffee that have been like i don't know i don't know what happens inside but my body just goes like really you want me to burn this airplane fuel no i'm done <laughs> it just like turns <laughs> off I don't well know. yeah like, that's that's funny it, i because i know this from working with kids with adhd and i don't know if if this applies but um so it's it's different like caffeine affects people differently and for whatever reason giving caffeine to kids with adhd actually calms them down versus speeds them up so a lot of times in the mornings parents will give their kids like a drink of of, ca- of coffee in the morning just to kind of help like regulate their system for the day which seems really weird <laughs> but um but i've known i've had multiple patients and doctors to say that that that's a helpful thing to do so well here's the thing uh having been diagnosed with add in my youth i find that um and talk to other people that have similar afflictions it seems that coffee has uh almost like a similar effect to um like i took vivacine but like adderall or something like that it kind of almost like focuses the energy into something productive rather than like just doing stupid goofing off stuff Mm -hmm. i don't know (laughs) like i i didn't i wasn't hyperactive but um i definitely felt like i mean it's not like i would wouldn't do anything when i like went to school or something but i you know like it's just like for some reason the appeal of just like doing whatever came to mind um that was just like fun was obviously went out over anything else (laughs) and just like my mind would change like topics to even if I gave myself at one moment I'm like okay let me focus I'm gonna do this like the next cycle change like 10 seconds later is gonna be like but what about that other thing (laughs) you know I think Mm -hmm. something about coffee kind of almost makes it be like it focuses like you're like it makes you fixate on doing a single task. And that's kind of like what I was describing earlier when I was saying, like, sometimes you get attached to the wrong task, particularly yeah. like, the ADD jumps in right before it kicks in. So you like jump to the other task and then you end up spending like four hours, like carving something out of your pencil. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Of doing homework. But yeah. Um, so it. I was just looking it up for caffeine and ADHD and it's saying that some scientists think caffeine has a potential as an ADHD treatment because of its effects on do- dopamine levels, which improve memory and concentration. Yeah. So I mean, it's it's wild if you've ever taken like ADD med- medication, like whatever it's doing to your brain, it's like suddenly you can just focus on a single thing and get it done almost to a fault like that. It, I, I've had similar experiences on uh, ADD medication of like you sometimes will just get stuck doing something really weird <laughs> like you know i i spend i get all my homework done like in class going um you know like on the medication i would just uh, be able to like do my homework like while i was listening to the lecture at the same time hey productivity and then i would come home and spend like eight hours building like meticulously building like a map in halo's forge <laughs> yeah. just because i'm like i still i still want something to like latch on to and like uh focus on and True. tweak and just it's almost like minutia is exciting all of a sudden yeah very strange well i do want to i would do want to preference preference this episode by saying that it's a case-by-case basis and a lot of medical professionals do not recommend giving caffeine to children so don't just go <laughs> start giving your kids caffeine um, but that's especially if they're taking a prescription medication for ADHD because of the um, effects that it could have against the brain if you add too much of a stimulant at one time. So, um, yeah. Talk to your doctor. Anyway, Please talk do to, not talk take to your uh, medical advice from this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <gasps> but uh, it does say that it can help uh, with, with concentration alertness. But, you know, anyways. But I also, I was, I was also researching 
how it affects different people. And it says each person's um, receptors are different due to genetics and caffeine might not bind well to people who say that caffeine does not affect them. It says that pro- they probably do not have very quote unquote sticky receptors. And after joining up to your receptors, Sticky. caffeine travels to your liver where it is metabolized. That was just an extra an extra tidbit for you, just so you know where it's going. So that's interesting. Hey, it just It's weird that what, things can affect people differently. So strange. But anyways, I think we're... Oh, I, I didn't tell you my vice. So I think my vice... I don't, I, I don't have very many, like, if you think of, like, traditional vices. But I would say that my thing that I would probably want to give up or try to change a little bit, is that whenever I get too stressed or if I'm sad or like something like that, where I like I'm, I'm having like a down day or whatever, I always just like want to do the cozy thing, like just curl up and read a book or um, like watch a YouTube video or something versus actually shifting my mindset and becoming productive and out and getting out of that feeling and actually... Um, like overcoming it I just kind of like okay enough's enough I'm just going to check out and like yeah you know what I mean your vice is giving in to the uh, feeling media machine (laughs) the media machine yeah or just the feeling in general and which I think is okay sometimes but it if it happens every single time it's kind of a it's an issue okay so um, that was all one question yeah we went on a long tangent so I don't know how many more we're going to get through, but let's just go on our tangents if we want to go on our tangents, okay? Yeah, how about that? Yeah, we, we will not listen to your, we'll do the opposite. Okay, so what's a cause that's important to you? A cause? Yeah, I would say probably um, for me it would be either, well, I've got three like kind of at the top of my list, but um, one would definitely be animals, <laughs> like help save the animals let's let's all just be kind to animals um another one would be um children with trauma like helping children who have been through some kind of major trauma in their life and or like human trafficking uh that kind of stuff and what was the third one that i would that came to mind just now um uh, 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 well i can't think of it at the moment but just, you know, generally giving back to society, helping those that that just need a little boost in their life to help set them back on track, you know, that kind of thing. So what about you? Right. I feel like I've just been awarded um, the sachet on stage and they're like, you're the new Miss America <laughs> now. Uh, That's exactly have, what this if is. If you could have one thing, what would you have? And I'm like, world, world peace. peace. <laughs> <laughs> um. Oh, no, wait, they do that before they get the crown. Right. Of course. Sash. Yeah, they don't want to give it to somebody who's like, yeah. I just want to eat candy all day. <laughs> I want to dominate them. <laughs> I want to take over the world. Um, You know, I, I mean, this is kind of because you're saying important to me. So I feel yeah, like it might, specific. Be, it might be a little uh more narrow focus just because of the kinds of things that I spend a lot of my time focusing on. Yeah. But definitely, I feel like. Uh, the advancement of technology and science can open up so many more pathways for uh, individuals to like find freedom and a space to be themselves in the world. Like I feel like the internet has done an amazing job of like connecting like-minded people together for better and worse um, across the globe and allowed for as many times, as many bad examples as people can find of like, you know, uh, incels or racist or something like finding a like group on the internet you can also find like tons of people that have had a really rough time um like you know people in like rural kentucky that are gay or transgender individuals that like want to be able to speak to somebody that understands them and could never find that in a world that didn't have the internet because they just don't live in a place or around people that are understanding of that and You're saying like pre-internet, pre-technology. Yeah, I think a, a lot of people had trouble, you know, if somebody was yeah, that's raised true. in an area that, you know, just wasn't sympathetic to what they were feeling. And I mean, just even uh, something that probably a lot more people can relate to is just like mental health or like mental situations that people feel stressful or anxiety um, and they 
don't really have anybody in their particular life that they can talk to because maybe everybody just you know their parents or the people that um they're with just don't get it or don't like experience the same types of issues so you know it's kind of i think it's a nice thing also that it just allows you to be anonymous and be able to speak freely in a way and just kind of see um put that out there and see if you can connect with people very true i think it's created a lot of that's just that's an example of something that's already happened with technology but i think that can be push forwards and i think that also just learning about the world can help people realize that there are issues and um stuff like um for example like the stuff that happened with like black lives matter and stuff like would that movement had even occurred um without like the without twitter and like the videos that people were taking of um you know the horrible situations that led to um you know people like getting enraged enough to go on that movement like it all comes down to knowing about what's actually happening in the world. And a lot of that came about because of technology. And I think that um, similarly, like studies in science can come up with ways to solve problems that um, otherwise could have been like huge, huge problems. Like the fact that we can come out. I mean, it seems like an eternity for us right now that is taking so long for this vaccine to come out for um, COVID. But the fact that we can even create a vaccine, like we know about, um, you know, medically how to, achieve that is so helpful compared when you look back at something like the black plague or even like spanish influenza and how what a firestorm that was on our planet without you know modern medical technology so true Um, yeah Yeah. those advancements can you really dove into that i was like okay he's going the technology route but that really turned into like humanitarian uh genius so i think you've won I think oh, you, you've won the Miss America. I only gave concept. one. You asked for like what three? <laughs> no, I asked for one. I gave three because that was like oh, you three that jumped to mind. Just okay. yeah, that was awesome. Okay. okay, yeah. I mean, I think it's just so far-reaching and just generally <laughs> elevates. It basically humanity. covers every cause, guys. So yeah, it, it's, you it know. elevates all of humanity at once. You know? <laughs> it's cool. cool. I mean, there are definitely ways that you can use it incorrectly, but. Well, sure, there's a double-edged sword, but, you know, hopefully mostly for good. Same with medical stuff, like... Yeah, ask Oppenheimer. (laughs) Is he a serial killer? (laughs) No. He was the... uh, That's my brain. I'm like, oh, ask the guy who uh, misused it. He's the um, credited as the uh, father of the atomic bomb. Oh, oh, yes. Okay. Makes sense. Okay, well, um, let's see. Let's do one more. Well, maybe. Well, we'll get to ten. This is number eight. So, what is the best compliment you ever received? Um, ooh, it's a great question. Um, have I ever received a compliment? <laughs> Step one. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. Like, I can't think of. Uh, I mean, the other day, Lervin said I look cute. So, Aww. you know, your f- fiance noticing you're cute. That's, that's cute. That's that that's is nice. cute. That's well, nice. well, you that did good. just win the humanitarian award for for the world on this podcast like two seconds ago so i mean i <laughs> yeah, don't know maybe that, maybe cute trumps that i don't know yeah well yeah <laughs> sorry thanks for calling me humanitarian but don't care okay <laughs> um no that's that thank you lisa that uh, was very nice i know yeah this is a hard one because it's like you have to go scroll through your whole life to think of like the one that hit entire existence i'm sure there were plenty but i have one that sticks out to me and it just happens that you were the one that gave me this compliment. But it was oh. when we it was when we were little. You, I don't remember how old. Maybe like um, seven. Maybe like six or seven. I was driving you somewhere. So I was like obviously old enough to drive. Probably like 16, 17. I don't know. And you looked over at me and you're like, you, you asked me if I was an angel. And I was like, no, I'm not an angel. And you're like, but you're so perfect and nice. And I was like, oh, <laughs> really? Begins weeping. Like, I know. I was road. like, oh, starts crying. But you were like dead serious. You like dead seriously asked me if I was an angel. And I was like, no, but thanks. <laughs> and I was remember that being like the sweetest thing that you actually thought that I could be an angel. I'm still suspicious. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah, right. Uh, I think I think the uh, what's it called? The veil has come down. Um, okay, number nine. When when were you the most inspired? I don't know if this means like. Oh no! The when most no no no. Inspired. When are you the most inspired? So maybe not like a specific 
time in your life, but like what, I guess maybe like when, when are you the most, I'll let you interpret that however you want. I feel like you need to achieve to, to capture inspiration. You must achieve an aesthetic. You must immerse (laughs) yourself in an absolute mood. Yeah. An atmosphere. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Atmosphere is a great word for it. It's like, I don't know. Sometimes I, I turn on all like the, uh, I have these like um, Edison bulb, like string lights and I turn mm-hmm. all those on and I get the fireplace going. And then um, like, I don't have a fireplace, but I have a TV. So, you know, use your imagination and um, <laughs> you know, you just put on some jazz or something. And then like, it just puts you in this weird, like cozy mood. And then that can give you some inspiration or you can go out to like a coffee shop where that has like a nice view over the city or something. And then, you know, just put on like some synth wave or something in your earbuds and get your laptop out. And just start typing, you know. Very nice. Yeah, I would say similar to that, like that I need I need to feel like my surroundings are supporting me in my inspiration. And also I get inspired when if the pe- if I'm around people if they're also feeling inspired like mm. can I also like um, extend that to um not being around people inspires me yeah <laughs> yeah I would say I'm most I might well I would say my, my most uh what's the word um not successful what is it like productive productive yes thank you I'm my most productive when I'm by myself yeah and I don't have distractions yeah for sure oh gosh that's what a distraction something about and even like I say go to a coffee shop and then like there is a beautiful <laughs> solidarity and an, an anonymity yeah like if I know you, what you mean. If, like you can you can be like total you can feel like the most absolute sense of loneliness in a crowd you know what I mean like, yeah, for that, sure. That is almost as uh, effective of being alone as being locked in a solitary room a thousand miles away from anybody. I guess so. I don't know if I'd go that far. I I, I find see Tim. Um, I will say our brother also enjoy like he gets he likes to be around people without an, interacting with like at a coffee shop to be um inspired and and to work and stuff like that. I, I find it very distracting sometimes, like being around other people when I'm trying to, to be productive or anything like that. I don't, I don't have that same, I don't get it, <laughs> I guess. I Not that it's bad. Go, I think you need to go bigger. You need to go into bigger crowds and see about mm-hmm. like, just try and like get that mood, that mood of like, I am an island of existence and like walking through this crowd, nobody could care less about who I am. And so it's almost as if, I'm a thousand miles away from anybody. So in like New York or somewhere. Where yeah. Somewhere where, you know, you're going to be walking down the street and like nobody is going to pay you a second thought. Or even if they do, it's like, like if somebody asks you for the time or directions or I don't know, there's a like crazy bum that's like asking for money or something and kind of weirding you out. It's like, these are all like <laughs> not really, they're almost like forces of nature. Like none of them actually care about like you as an individual. There's like an oddly comforting thing about that okay yeah i see what you're saying like they're not going to get into your life story or anything i mean they might that's try, true but you can oh, just yeah. be like you can just <laughs> nope, like yeah uh you know i don't know in new york you if somebody's like uh hey where, what's the direction to the subway and you go um you can take a left down go kick rock street <laughs> and then walk away <laughs> and then like what are they gonna do <laughs> they're just gonna be like hey you suck pal we're gonna, and then you're like, oh. we're gonna pull out a knife and stab you that's what they're gonna do um, I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm trying to envision this, this world, but at the same time, I feel like really obligated to make eye contact with people and nod or smile or like, and every time I pass somebody, I'm like, okay, I have to you, you gotta look master, and nod and You gotta smile. master the ability to look through people. Well, sure. But I mean, I still feel like, I don't know. It's like been ingrained in me to acknowledge the people around me. I don't know why. But I, I don't make like the first attempt. Like I'm not going to go out of my way to be like starting up a conversation. But like if I'm passing somebody, I will like look up and like smile because I don't know. But at the I same would, time, in the back of my mind, I'm, I'm thinking, I hope they don't look up and smile. I would be because- a lot more likely to strike up a conversation in something like a coffee shop not near my house than somewhere like my job 
where I actually oh, sure. could stand to make better friends with people and it would probably help me in some yes, tangible 100%. way. Yes, 100%. But yeah. then like, you know, in this weird coffee shop in the middle of nowhere, like I could strike up a conversation, have like this really nice experience with this person, but I know that it's bottled up in that square footage. As soon as I walk yes. out the door, like it's over. True. Right? Like I find that I'm more engaged and interested in people that I have n- no connection with at all. Like total strangers. Yeah. It's fantastic. I don't know why. That's weird. But it's, I see what you're saying. You can get like little, it's almost like, it's almost like a TV show. It's like a little bite-sized piece of reality, but you know, there's no space It is kind of. It's the same thing as we were talking about before. Human curiosity and like wanting to see and learn about people, like in the whole vlogging and like reality or whatever, and like listening to podcasts like this. But never really want wanting the obligation of connecting in like a real and meaningful way. <laughs> it's like what's wrong with us? I oh, don't know. You know, weird. I went to Foxtail the other day. They built a new one right near here. That's a coffee shop. Oh, for really? That doesn't know. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, there's one right there. Yeah. And I went there and I asked for a weird coffee that I'd never um, heard of before well I, I think i've heard of it but i never like seen anybody get it or at least i didn't know what it was so i was like i'm gonna get this because i'll try something new today and turn out to be this whole thing like you go and it, what was it was siphon coffee so okay they use like an erlenmeyer flask there's science that happens there's tubes there's bubbling <laughs> there's instant flash boiling and it's like a whole thing okay. there's bunsen burners involved and it's an intense process. And <laughs> the the barista like took my order and she's like, okay, just so you know, that'll take about 15 minutes. And I was like, uh, okay, well, you know, I'm down to try something new. So whatever it takes. <laughs> and she's like, okay, cool. You're going to want to sit over here. And I'm like, what? <laughs> and she's like, it's kind of a show. <laughs> oh like, my gosh. Like, what in the world? And it was kind of like totally fascinating. And I ended up like, there was like three baristas there at the time. And it was like whole, such a whole process. And like, they were so excited to actually like use this contraption that they had. Uh-huh. And like, they were all kind of fascinated by the process of it. Cause like only one of them had been like trained with it and like used it a couple of times. And so yeah. he was doing it. But then the other ones were like referencing the manual as he was doing it. And they're like, I don't know. I think you're <laughs> supposed to do it like this. And like, we were all converse- conversing about it at the same time. Cause obviously like I'm in interested in coffee so i'm like yeah where do you get that and they're like well he's like i got this one from target and i was like oh wow <laughs> and like we got in this whole conversation i felt like i got to know these three breezes that are like at this uh uh-huh. foxtail but it's just so close to my house now i feel like i skirted the line you know <laughs> you did a little bit i flew Every a little too close to there. the sun <laughs> i went to the drive through the other day and i felt awkward because it was that guy and my car was dirty and i was like oh i kind of know you now and this is weird now you've you've seen Uh, the real me i had this whole yeah i could be cool in front of you one second and now now i'm just a guy in a dirty car yeah Uh, true but every time you go in there now maybe they'll be like hey it's a what's it called siphon guy (laughs) siphon coffee dude siphon coffee dude and They'll give you, like, a free coffee or something. Yeah. And it was also a little awkward, the, like, disengagement in that situation, because they were all, like, really interested, and they are like, oh, how is it? How is it? Like, as soon as they served it to me, and I'm like, wow, this is a lot of pressure. Uh, uh, feeling it's, it's a little, right. Feel a little uh, <laughs> awkward. Am I supposed to say something about, like, uh, nutty after notes or something? <laughs> I'm like this fancy guy that ordered fancy coffee, um, and there's all these baristas that make coffee for a living, like, wanting to know my opinion. Um, yeah. But I'm like well but then the guy that like originally uh crafted the beverage was like well hang on that is by far the hottest cup of coffee we serve <laughs> he was like it comes out of this thing at like 300 degrees <laughs> He's please like, do not sue us yeah he was like you want to give that a little while so i was just kind of sitting there blowing on it for like 10 minutes and they're all just while they all check- watch you checking back in every now and then i'm like okay <laughs> still um, waiting <laughs> Yeah, I was That's like, so funny. I was like, this is just about reached my <laughs> uh, my talking to people quota today. My comfort level, and now they're just, now now you're sitting there, uh-huh. like as a like an anonymity situation where you're like, they don't know you. You're in a coffee shop. You're supposed to be on your own enjoying your coffee, right? But now you're known to people. Now that you've made yourself aware. Yeah. And so now they're just like Here's the thing. I I, I went into it I went into it ready for a new experience. So okay. I was a little I was a little more open-minded than I would normally be. I it wasn't horrible. But the situation <laughs> eventually presents itself where it's like, okay, 
It cools down. I have a sip. I'm like, wow, best cup of coffee I've ever had. How wonderful. Thank you guys so much for uh, making it for me. That was wonderful. A little extra tip. Um, you know, good stuff. And then, um, you know, they just like kept talking about how the coffee was like, how it was made and how they like started doing this and stuff. And I was like, yeah. But yeah, at what point yeah. do I like, I'm not going to drink the whole coffee right here at the bar. Like talking you to you. should have said, well, I got, I got to get going. I, I came Bye. here. I came here to read a book. That's why oh. I wanted, that's why I wanted the coffee. So. You know, uh, you can't even enjoy yourself. Awkward. Like, oh. And then, so I'm like, all right, I'll go to the bathroom. And then when I come back, I'll be like, wow. So, um, I'm going to see you guys. Thanks for the coffee. Um, but then when I come back, there's a guy awkwardly sitting at the spot where my coffee cup is talking <gasps> no. to the guy. And I'm like, um, that's even more awkward. Yeah, now you have to engage with a totally different person <laughs> and start and so this like, whole. I, I, I managed to slip in, slip out. Uh, they were engaged in some sort of very specific coffee order or something. Um, wow. And I just walked over and uh, uh, here's how you assert dominance in this situation. You take the <laughs> coffee cup like, Ahem, and then they're like, oh. And I'm like, yep. <laughs> whoa. And then I walk away. I like totally that. disengaged, but I feel a little bad because I never said goodbye to the people and they were really nice. Oh. So, and you know. then you went and drove through the drive thru with yep. a dirty car and pretended like you didn't know them. Yep. I'm That's sure exactly they love you now. I, yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> you've created drama. <sighs> for their, their, now that's, how am I that's supposed the to risk. drink coffee and read books and be inspired? That's true. That's true. That's the risk of um, socializing. With so I suppose it's a little closer to uh, not being alone than a uh, solitary room <laughs> a thousand miles away. That's the true. Like you go into a coffee shop, you don't know how many people are going to be in there. And if there's just one extra person, they're going to say, hey, man, let's let's sit together. Let's chat. Let's hang out. And you're, and you're like, well... I kind of came know. in here to be alone. But. At, at some point, well, that person's crazy at that point. You gotta, <laughs> you just gotta leave the coffee shop if somebody goes, hey, this seat taken at like a two-person table. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, I have a story too because I, I, one way that I like to be alone and kind of also be out is going on walks like, you know, around the neighborhood and out around, you know, the area. And right. the other day I was walking and I was I was returning home. So I was on my way back and I was back in my neighborhood walking towards my house. But like I, my house goes like around a block. So I, ha- I was walking down the main street and that street dead ends into a cul-de-sac. So I'm walking down the street. This car honks at me and then kind of slows down a little bit and then drives off and then comes back around and mm. pulls up next to me and rolls down the back window where there's this little girl in the back seat. She's probably like six or seven. Cool. And so I'm like, oh, I was like, hi, you know? And I'm like, okay, what are, what are they doing? Like, what is this? Right. And then I look in the front seat and there's a man in the front seat driving and he kind of is like looking back and I'm like, this is really, aw- he doesn't say anything. He's really awkward. He's right, kind of just like, kind of like driving now? alongside me. So I'm just like, oh, maybe they're lost. Like maybe they, or maybe they thought I was somebody I'm, I'm not. Like maybe they thought I yeah, was her so mom or something. They're like, that's not Julie. Yeah. Like now it's really awkward. So I like kind of start to walk towards the car and I'm just kind of like, do you need anything? Do you need help? And then it drives off again and it starts going straight and it goes towards that cul-de-sac area. So I'm like, oh, thinking... They're going to laugh it off and think, oh, yeah, that was somebody we thought that was somebody That was not else. Julie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And so then I get down to this part where I have to turn and go towards my street. So I turn and then it comes back around and pulls up next to me. And then now I'm on the side of the driver's side where the man is. He rolls down his window and he's like, hi there. I, I hope I didn't scare you before. I wasn't trying to be like spooky or whatever. He's like... But um, anyways, and he just starts talking to me like a, like picking up conversation. <laughs> and he's just like, so d- do you know this guy in this other name? And like down the street, we're going to visit him. He's a drummer. He was a drummer for a band for a long time. Anyway, he's her ne- He's um, her her uncle or whatever. And so we're going to go visit him. And anyway, do you know this guy over here who lives here? He's the homeowner guy, homeowner association president. And. I'm just like, yeah, I kind of know him, but I don't know the drummer guy. And then we're just, he just goes on and on and on and on. And I'm just like, okay, <laughs> it was so awkward. And, and then he just sits there and like looks at me and, and I'm thinking, um, so then I ask again, I'm like, do you need help? Do you need directions? Like, why are you talking to me? <laughs> like, 
<laughs> I'm just trying to enjoy my walk. And I didn't want to be rude. And then I'm sitting there thinking like, is this a normal thing? Am I being rude to like just want to walk away? Should I be nice and engage in a conversation? Should I get to know this person? Or, or Derek, that guy wanted a phone number. Is this totally? But he was like old. He was like. That doesn't he, matter. <laughs> he was like maybe in his 60s or 70s. And he was like a mob boss kind of guy. He was like what? super Italian, like old school driving. He was driving a Lincoln. Oh, and wow. like, And he was just like. He had like this accent, like he was in, he, he was like a boss, you know? <laughs> so I was a little like. He's like, hey, um, you know my friend Tommy? If you don't know my friend Tommy, <laughs> you're getting your legs broken, eh? Yeah. <laughs> so then I'm like, maybe he thinks I witnessed something I didn't witness. And like, am I going to get kidnapped and killed here? I don't know. Get whacked? <laughs> so I'm just like, I I get those conversations quite a bit sometimes where I'm like, how far do I Here's take this conversation you before got, I walk away? You got a pretty friendly face. So I think our interactions, uh, also <laughs> you being a woman, me being a man, may be a bit different in large crowded spaces. Yeah, um, yeah. Okay. But, Point uh, made. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, so. I treat those things as random interactions. Uh, I've had a few times like on walks and stuff like cars, like people lean out and yell stuff or like that's so weird circle back um, around and like i don't know like screech by peel out next to you or something it's like sometimes they just see someone on the side of the road and they just want to be like that it's just kind of <laughs> like that's bizarre okay that is really cer- weird. certain kind of people i guess you can't you can't predict other people um the, the the world is a very unpredictable place so yeah i don't know i guess just but i, I mean I, I just kind of treat those things as like the uh a different kind of uh, sampling of the human experience. <laughs> <laughs> That's one way to look at it. A different sampling of, of yeah. humans. And, and Not this, too much a, of a fan of that flavor, but it, um, it yeah. certainly is interesting <laughs> to know that it's out there. Oh my gosh, that's funny. I, actually, that reminds me of this movie we recently watched um, in an Amazon watch party, actually, with some... some um, a streamer guy anyway it was called oh what was it called it was one of those really old like i think it came out in the 80s or 90s and it was kind of around the time of et do you know um extraterrestrial <laughs> yeah. with the reese's That's pieces the or one. the reese's pieces uh, oh it was called explorer and it's about this kid these two well i guess there's like three kids and they one of them's kind of like a nerd and he he's like a scientist type and he somehow develops this orb that can pick up and f- things and float so and he increases the size anyway yeah oh my god i know that uh, yeah do you know what i'm talking about i do this movie? and then he like he flies it up to the girl's window so that he can like yeah yeah hang out with yeah, her yeah, yeah. <laughs> well not hang out with her but spy on her yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's a nice way of putting it <laughs> <laughs> hang out with her for a distance without her knowing <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's the one and then they could like also like teleport by going into like cyberspace or something right well not only teleport but they can they can fly they can go really fast without feeling the force like the g-forces right so anyway eventually they end up in space and this is where we're pretty sure that um the writers of the movie of the plot or whatever either quit or (laughs) (laughs) that's just as far as they got had a major writer writer's block because from this point on it's a completely different movie and they end up going into space with and they they get taken into this um alien ship and they meet these aliens and it's like the weirdest interaction (laughs) between a human and an alien (laughs) Anyway, it's like uh, I imagine in that situation, it's like you know the stoners at the beginning of this podcast that make the <laughs> uh, blueberry cream cookie. Yeah, it's like while they were eating that blueberry or cream cookie. No, they didn't make the blueberry cream cookie because no stoner would. They were right, making no. a, a cookies and cream cookie, and then they were eating that, <laughs> and they were coming up, and they're like, "What if we made this movie that was like, oh my god, like you had this <laughs> bubble, right? Okay, and then you get in the bubble, and then oh, you could like spy on girls, and you could go to space, and they're like, oh my god, yeah, yeah, stop there, stop there, let's save it." We'll, we'll uh, write the rest later. And then they got yeah. sober and they were like, what? Oh, dang. What do we, what do, we do after that? Well, What's it up? actually it actually feels like the sober people wrote the wrote the main plot and then the high people wrote the part with the aliens. <laughs> it's so bizarre. I'm Maybe like, they took who another comes hit, up with this? And then they were like, oh boy, <laughs> <laughs> this 
and, and then we go into the aliens, and the aliens like. Bleh. Then they took acid, and that's where this. That's what it was. That's what it is. <laughs> I was like, pass it off to the the next. So yeah, it's next so junkie. weird. But I was like, that's your that's your alien connection. That's like the weird. Like you think all aliens are like this, but they're really not. They're like, yeah. that's, those are the weird ones. What um, was that movie? Um, oh, I vaguely remember this. There was a movie where this person, they found like a robot from space um, and then they're trying to take care of it and they go to like a McDonald's to get a, a oh no, they, they get trapped inside of it somehow inside yeah. the robot. Yeah. They get, it's like they somehow get like trapped inside of it and then it's like, caring for them like they end up getting hungry and they're like i will uh give you sustenance where do you what require the? sustenance and then they go to like mcdonald's and then they order like a big mac but like to feed it to them like inside of the thing it like grinds it up into like a, a shake like <laughs> essentially like food process liquefies it and then like feeds them a big mac via like a tube and they're like oh this is disgusting and they're like what does it matter what form the nutrients are in <laughs> It was great. What the heck? It was like one of those B sci-fi like 80s movies. And I just remember that scene being like, ew. Look Are you Big serious? Mac. I'm going to have to find what this movie is because this would be a perfect um, Amazon watch party movie, I feel like. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. Mystery Science Theater. You should do it. Is that what it was? No. like a, oh, that's, oh, a, oh. that's a like people that do like a uh, watch parties with like cheesy movies and then they make oh, fun of them. Oh, yes, yeah, like a comedy basically. Group. Yeah. All right. Uh, anyways. <laughs> so <laughs> I loved our tangents. Those, yeah. those were awesome. Oh, you know what I did? That was awesome. What? I went to St. Augustine. That was awesome. Oh yeah. I was going to ask it you how that was. It was all lit up for Christmas time. Um oh, I bet so it was, it was way back at Christmas. Um, and it was amazing, but unfortunately everybody knew it would be amazing and it was very packed. Oh, yeah. But the, we went on a ghost tour after <gasps> yes. hours in the jail, the old jail, the historic Ooh. jail. It's on the national registrar of haunted places. And did you see anything haunted? Um, <laughs> well, well, well. <laughs> um, we definitely got some EMF readings. Okay. So this is what happened. Ooh, ooh. They went full like phasmophobia on us. <laughs> they gave us you. You ever you played that game? We mentioned it on this uh, podcast before. I don't yeah. know if you played it, but you. Said I didn't it. play it, but I know. Yeah. So they give you a spirit box. They give you a a thermal gun. Like a, it's actually got an imaging thing on it, so you could see like you can see it. You can like see outlines of objects and stuff, and like see their temperatures. And um, they give you uh uh EMF readers. They give you um divining rods which were pretty cool if you've ever seen those like people like search for water with them and stuff oh you ever see, one? Mm-hmm. You ever seen yeah. those? You know what i'm talking about i've watched ghost hunters i know what you're talking yeah, about yeah yeah so oh my gosh lervin got the divining rods and mm-hmm. it was pretty spooky they're moving Ooh. around and we got some uh some emf readings like at the same time that the uh divining rods were moving and it was really something it wow was really, it was a it was quite an immersive experience you go in uh, the one thing i would say it was pretty short they only gave you like 30 minutes it's a small oh. jail so <laughs> you know but the yeah. annoying thing is is that there's other people there so you don't want like it's totally ruins the experience if you're there with like some rando um so you wait till like the cell block is empty before you do your investigation and so sometimes oh, yeah. you end up waiting by the door for a few minutes while people like lay True. in the bed and go am i annoying you ghost <laughs> And then you go do that. So. Okay. Oh, yeah. So you do it too. Yeah. yeah. And then they give you all the spooky stats on. Uh, oh, they have the names, so you can uh, really uh, enrage the demons. Ooh, you by, can talk to them. Yeah. They well, they have the names of everyone that was hung at the jail because they have they it would they put people to death like at on site. Yikes. <laughs> yeah. So it was no it was wonder it's spooky. haunted. And they would tell you uh, like all the different entities that they uh, believe they have encountered, and uh, there were several ghosts show episodes that were filmed at the jail i guess oh yeah yeah maybe i've seen one i, don't, I doubt it i would remember it was st <laughs> augustine <laughs> it was cool it was just it was like it, you know the kind of like immersive experience that you have like an escape room or something where it's like you know it's kind of like yeah not yeah. real but it's like oh it's so fun to like be in it and be like sarah are you here that's another that's another situation where yeah the atmosphere kind of makes it you know where you where you're inspired but yeah 
Yeah. It's got all the old accoutrements, the old steel cast iron like doors. And you swing them closed and like Uh. echoes throughout the whole cell block. Yikes. That sounds fun, though. I mean, I'm, I've am i done a ghost tour there before, but not during Christmas. And it wasn't at the jail. It was yeah. a different one. I've done the lighthouse one, too. Um, that was kind of cool. Just It was more... That one was a little more history-based. Um, yeah. But there is a lot more... They gave us a lot more time. Like, I think there was, like, as much as, like, hours. Wow. I think there was almost... I think there was over an hour. And... Um, Maybe I wonder if anybody's actually it, seen a ghost there, like on one of those tours, or if there's just too many people. <laughs> they they did say that uh, the woman Sarah in the female cell block would only reveal herself to when uh, females are present. Oh, safety first. True. Got to You got to align yourself with with the same energy. I get it. <laughs> <laughs> but then there's also one called the Crawler, which was not. Uh, any individual person they th- they think, but uh, an amalgamation of all of the evil and bad intentions, all yeah. of the hurt and pain, all bottled up into <laughs> one malevolent entity that crawls up the walls. Awesome. Yeah. Could you imagine getting locked in there at night by yourself? Here's the thing. Like, I don't necessarily believe in that, but if I was locked alone in that jail i would send i would believe suddenly i'd be like you would you would suddenly believe worst time <laughs> to but hey <laughs> yeah it's like you don't believe until you're alone in a situation like that you're like oh well, maybe it's That's like funny. that gun's fake and someone points at it and you go whoa <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but maybe not though stop that's funny yeah oh spooky so you got to get to do that and you did the did you go on the light tour too or just walk around and see lights um we drove and saw that it was way too packed to get a parking space uh the, okay the wow. night time basically in the yeah. night time um and yeah there was just it was like shoulder to shoulder people down like wow. the streets that people like to walk like in the historic district they have all the shops and stuff mm-hmm. um, i feel like I feel like it's those things like this are far more um, packed now than they would have been any other year because people are just <laughs> people like are desperate. Yeah, people are itching to people get out. People want to get out. But it's so funny because, um, you know, it's a pandemic and now people are like know. bursting out, <laughs> filling the streets. Well, because they didn't have any re- they didn't have anything to do for so long. Now they're like, yeah, cause oh, you're not supposed to be around people. want to get out and do stuff now. Yeah. There was a primo Hilton spot that was like right there on the street. Like Hilton Mm -hmm. got, I don't know, a little nook in there. And man, they really did up the lights. It was crazy. It was blinding. Really? Nice. I love it. I love the lights. I think they also, because like they must have done a mandate or something that like it's going to be all like this specific color temperature of white light. Like all of the lights match. (laughs) Like obviously they're done a little differently like per establishment so i think the establishments do do it themselves like mm-hmm. it's not just like the city comes by and dresses everything in lights yeah. they do like probably the main like square and park area but i think they must have some kind of mandate that's like you must have these particular kind of white lights because like everything matches but they're just like strung up a little differently for wow. each business that's crazy um I, that's the hardest part about christmas lights honestly is is matching them together and in a a non tacky way you know that that makes sense that actually looks looks pretty so good they gotta do what they gotta do i wonder how how they coordinate that yeah but it's just it's kind of a cool experience to just have like several city blocks of like this old historic town just all like draped in white lights yeah it's very pretty if you've never been to st augustine wait till christmas time and go or don't go because then. there's a lot or of don't, people i guess <laughs> that's true that's true it is pretty um, beautiful though so i've experienced I guess it's worth it. i've experienced st augustine and and so many different um seasons i guess or different ways you know yeah. i've been i've been for like the historic stuff i've been for the beach stuff i've been for just like enjoying the shops and the olds like just to go for the nostalgia or a feeling like you're walking down a an old you know town or whatever yeah and then i've been there for the christmas stuff and i've been there for the partying which is like a whole other i never you would never even think st augustine (laughs) is like going there for partying but 
I, I had the opportunity. So I, unfor- I, I, I really didn't know that. Well, I didn't really know that's what that was a thing. I was like, well, this was kind of a weird situation because I went to St. Augustine by myself for a week or well, that was the plan. <laughs> um, <laughs> that was the plan. You might wonder how I ended up here, though. Yeah, I mean, I used to do that. I used to go on like little mini vacations by myself. And this one um, was one of those scenarios. But it ended up that um, two things happened. Our cousin from up north came down to visit basically around the same time. So she's like, well, I want to see, you know, and she was with friends. So it wasn't she wasn't there for like visiting family. She was like there to hang out with friends. And sure. so, and she was only going to be there for like a couple nights while she was like traveling around Florida. And so I was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to be there around there at the same time. It's so weird. So that's when I met up with her and a couple of nights and we went out and did some of that partying I talked about. Ooh. And then the second half, well, I was there for a couple of nights by myself, but then the second half, Mike ended up coming and... and partying. Well, no, he wasn't really into the party. He was actually not into leaving the, the the room at all. And I was like, we, I kind of came here to visit, like, like to like, see you something. know, see Outside. stuff. So that's what I like to do. I like to like, yeah, enjoy where I am. So you don't so, really like partying, but what I have enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, I feel like you would have. Yeah. Because it's basically like that. It's like bars. It's not like clubs. It's more like a bunch of people in a bar acting like they're in a club, but it's just a bar. <laughs> Okay. Like, like you know how bars bar are or? like like pack yeah kind of like it's like a dive bar but um a little oh hey were you there in um Maybe I, was. I can't i can't remember if you were there did you yeah you were there you went with us to new orleans right yeah yeah i thought so so you know how like those places where they're like these little small bars but they also have like music and like live like live a live performance it's a party bar Kind of like a party bar, yeah. Party bar, it's like that. It's like that. It's a loud but bar. A loud, yeah. So it's no like uh, nook in the wall pub playing soccer on the TV. <laughs> no. However, the worst thing about that trip was so we parked in different places because I drove from my hotel to meet them in town. So like, and they were at their own place. And so we we arrived and we parked wherever we could find parking and we went out and did the things. And then I one thing you don't realize is that the actual St. Augustine touristy like parts shut down like at a decent hour. So by the time <laughs> you're done, decency. yeah, exactly. So by the time you're done doing the parting or whatever, the place is dead. Like it's completely dead. That and so awesome. Like we come out almost eerie. It is. It was totally eerie because this is kind of like a really old, t- like um, when was it? When was it built? I don't know. It's like what would you say? What what year? Can can we give people like uh, a mid sixteen seventeen hundreds? Yeah, it's like very early days, and it's small. It's like dark. It's spooky. It's I like, think, like I think he- the original fort because it. One of the main attractions there, for anyone that doesn't know, is uh, it has a giant like castle or fort. It's like a military uh, entrenchment where they have all uh, walls lined with cannons, all that good stuff. Uh, and it's really big and preserved by the National Park Association, so you can like go in there and stuff and check it out. Um, yeah. And yeah, so I guess the town kind of sprawled out among that from there and that's kind of like the historic district is like the town that cropped up around that fort so it's like this kind of like old timey like 1700s style uh it says like, 17th century it's like 17th oh, it's like century 1600s. spanish uh it's like a spanish um found, founded area obviously it's been retrofitted with electricity and you know, yeah, to yeah. function in the modern world but but the out the decor and the the vibe and everything is very very old and spooky. There's like, you know, um, what are they called? I keep wanting to call them funerals. I'm talking cemeteries. Cemeteries <laughs> just like, you know, out there. For With all, all the gravestones just that completely you just kind of have away. to, yeah, you have to walk past to get to your car. Um, yeah, so you come so, stumbling out of this bar, your <laughs> head's ringing, your eyes are blurry, like a grenade <laughs> just went off in your face and everything is dead. And basically... It's like empty and I 
I'm like, okay, bye, see you later. So they leave to go to their car. And I'm thinking, oh, okay, well, I know kind of where I was. So I'll start walking that way. I compl- I don't know where my car is. I lost my car. Oh, no. I, I couldn't find it. I, I couldn't remember exactly which parking lot, how far I was. I was basically walking around this city, this town alone at night looking for my car and there was no other cars there was literally nobody else <laughs> you're like i will take a car please I'll, I'll take any car i will hotwire that junk and get back to my hotel room um oh, so man. i think what, what i if, did was what I, if you're looking around for a car and then all of a sudden you turn a corner and you hear like oh and I then was suddenly see- you're in the 17th century <laughs> actually that would be so cool <laughs> that would be so cool to just experience that time travel anyway yeah that would be kind of neat but that was not the case and i i think i want to say it that i either heard something spooky or like heard talking but there was like nobody there kind of thing where i was obviously it was probably just somebody well maybe the clop clop is the headless horseman he's coming for oh no that's exactly the feel though that that's the feel that was the vibe and i was like I called Mike on the phone. Um, This was before he was there. But I was like, please just stay on the phone with me until I find my car. (laughs) Because I don't know (laughs) what I'm going to do. So anyway, I wandered around for a while. And then I I eventually found it. And You you looked down an alleyway. You saw some uh, figure with a top hat at the far end. Oh, gosh. A blade That's that's why I didn't um... call you. Because if I called (laughs) you, (laughs) you would have been like, I'd Look like, out it's for Jack the Ra- Ripper, the American years. <laughs> Hurry, he's going to get you. He's going to be right behind you any minute. I would start oh doing my God. the like. I'd, I'd be like, in tears. No, Lacey, you're fine. Oh, my God. Thanks. Yeah, that's exactly why I did What's that like. sound? Here's something <laughs> coming through the line. It sounds like horses. Oh, my God. Have you it seen that Johnny Depp movie? <laughs> I have. It's a good one. <laughs> shall, you shall watch that. But when you were there, it was super windy, right? Windy? It looked like uh, it, looked yeah, like it I mean, was really windy. But well, maybe we don't. just got, we stayed um, in a resort that was on the beachfront. So, mm-hmm. you know, you just get the, wake up in the morning, go out to the sea. It's, it's pretty breezy. Beautiful. Nice. Yeah. Well, they had fire pits and everything. It was great. That sounds really nice. So, guys, it, next time you're out looking for a place to vacation to, um, try St. Augustine. Come to Florida. Go to St. Augustine. Yeah. Don't go to Speaking Disney of, Orlando. That's. That's nah. the, yeah, that's the copy paste plastic corporate America. Come on, you're better than that. Yeah, go to go get some history in you and some vodka. St. Augustine. <laughs> they should write that on the sign. Yeah, and and get scared. And get spooky. And get spooky. Definitely go during Halloween or Christmas. Those are your your two options. <laughs> or Thanksgiving. Um, Split the difference. <laughs> no. Or yeah, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> um, whatever do do your thing but speaking of florida have you seen the weather report um did no. you know that <laughs> that in a couple of days it's going to be down to 32 degrees oh you mean a, a couple of weeks ago because this podcast was recorded yesterday <laughs> lisa <laughs> a couple of weeks into the past it's going to be super cold like oh boy yeah, like the coldest so it's been in a while. And technically, that's freezing temperatures. Hey, climate change. Let's get some snow. But I don't know if it'll snow. I think it might freeze like or get frosty. But I think it has to be, it has to remain at that temperature for a longer, a long enough period of time for it to produce snow. I don't know. I don't know. You, you got to get the ice crystals to form and then also to, you know, crystallize and then to provide, um, you know, crystalline water lattices. And yeah. And it would have to rain. So I'm a meteorologist. I don't know if you know this. But um, well, I mean, low nimbus. you're a jack of all trades. So I'm a jack the ripper. Yeah. <laughs> and with that, we're out. <laughs> <laughs> Spooky middle of the. January. <laughs> Zoinks, or, Lisa. Or, or February. <laughs> I think we better leave these podcasters. <laughs> oh, no. Run. He's coming. Is that, is that really how we end the podcast? No, that's that's really ridiculous. Wow. I mean, it's done we've now. Hit a, we we've hit it. a new low. I hope you so. enjoyed. Find us and follow us and be, be our friends. <laughs> Please. Because we love you. <laughs> Even we though need, we don't know you. We're, we we're need the, somebody to call while we're walking around by ourselves in St. Augustine. 
<laughs> no, we need somebody to be friends with that we don't actually know because we've we've yeah we've stated that we uh, <laughs> yeah we want that uh we want to use you as we lo- a yeah. vicarious look into the human experience we love you from a share distance your share your story we would love we actually would love to hear something about you so so send us your stories we love that instagram twitter check twitter first because that's where all the good stuff is <laughs> <laughs> i love that meme that says what is it how does it go facebook instagram twitter you know that one that's like check this out oh gosh i gotta that find sounds that. like a list of social networks not a meme no <laughs> I'll, I'll find it i'll insert it it'll <laughs> it'll be great <laughs> okay it'll be great guys Bye. Bye. See you next time. To be continued. And cut. You just always have to get the last word in. Oh, geez. Here you go. Shut your mouth.